The post office, Hillsborough, Grenfell and Windrush. Tragedies, scandals which led to people having to fight for justice. Tonight we're bringing together Jenny Hicks, whose two daughters, Sarah, age 19, and Vicky, age 15, died at Hillsborough. Kareem Musili, whose uncle, Heshem Rahman, died in the Grenfell Tower fire in 2017. Glenda Caesar was told she was an illegal immigrant after coming to the UK in 1961 as a baby with her mum as part of the Windrush generation. And Tracy Merritt, who was wrongly accused by the post office of theft and sacked by them in 2009. Play stopped after six minutes as overcrowding in the stands at the Hillsborough Stadium led to fans being crushed. A major incident is declared as a huge fire engulfs the tower block in West London. The poorest housing in one of the richest boroughs in the country. London is the place for me. Our state's callousness towards Windrush Generation Britons seems boundless. They set up this task force to create what they called a hostile environment for anybody who didn't have exactly the right documents. I haven't got that money and I don't know where it's gone. This terrible scandal's been going on for more than 20 years, but this primetime drama has now put it firmly in the national spotlight. Jenny, Kareem, uh, Glenda and Tracy, thank you all very much for being with us on Newsnight. Okay. You have never met before until this evening and there are lots of things that you have in common and also some very, very different experiences. And I wonder if I could divide our conversation up, if you like, into to different areas. First of all, when you knew you were in the middle of an injustice, when you realised it was going to take a long time to try to overturn the injustice, and then finally I want to ask you how you want it to end. Kareem, let me start with you. When, when did it dawn upon you that you were facing an injustice? Um, <clears throat> I mean, first of all, I just want to say, you know, thanks for having me, and it's just crazy that we're all around the table talking about our different experiences and they are different experiences but so many similarities in in, in what we've gone through and the injustice and yeah. the suffering but I mean for me for Grenfell um, it took a while um, I, I lived in my own sort of bubble you know I, I, I worked in the city I, I, I believed everything I heard from the government and the, and the powers that be and it wasn't until probably a couple of couple of weeks not seeing any sort of form of authority in the streets apart from police who were, weren't treating the families very well when they were looking for their loved ones. Um, and, and, and the response from, from the government. I, I, I started to realise that something really insidious was happening here. This wasn't a freak accident in one of the richest boroughs in Europe. Um, something had gone terribly wrong and as it went on, I started to realise that this was a lot bigger than, than what had just happened at Grenfell. Jenny, what about you? When did you know you were in the middle of an injustice? Well, with the um, Hillsborough uh, families, quite quickly, really, we weren't treated very well on the night uh, when we identified our daughters in the gymnasium at the football ground. Um, it was horrendous. We were treated like criminals and asked to make statements that night after just viewing our daughters in body bags, which... Which, how, how are you supposed to make a statement of fact? I don't know. No, uh, neither do I. We, we didn't have lawyers with us or, or anything. And then a few days later, there was the hideous article in The Sun. Yeah. And that's when, and it, when it accused Liverpool supporters of essentially urinating on dead bodies and yes. pickpocketing the dead. By yeah. the way, we, we can see your beautiful daughters here, Sarah, aged 19. I know they 19, are beautiful, aren't they? And Vicky, aged 15. Yeah, yeah. And um, so pretty quickly, and you didn't really want to believe that the, 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 the that the police were, were, were covering this up because, you know, I was brought up to respect the police, as were my children. Like you, I was in this bubble, um, you know, and suddenly you're thrown into the midst of, of, of all of this, and particularly, as I say, and 
would you believe it, 35 years down the line, the mud from those, what was, the fans were accused of in the sun, wrongly accused, yeah. I've got to say, because since they've been totally exonerated of any blame whatsoever. And I'm going to come back to the... the, yes. the, the the fact that sometimes the mud sticks it a little does, later. Yes. Glenda, when did you know you were in the middle of an injustice? I think it was um, when I went to a meeting when this all blew up and um, they wanted to meet with us, the person who compiled it, um, uh, reps from the Home Office in a hall. And I looked around and I actually saw people who were vagrants when I was growing up and I thought well they're in the same position as me mm -hmm. and once it had come out it was like getting other calls from other people and I was like wow but I think what really hit home was a friend that I had known for over 30 odd years I didn't know she was going through this but we were very close and that's when it hit home mm -hmm. that we're in the middle of something you know Big. a proper injustice yeah, yeah. And Tracy, what about you? Because you were sacked by the post office in 2009. Yeah. Um, and as I said, you know, there was no social media. So we were, we were very isolated. And when they told us you were the only one, mm. we really believed it. Um, I don't think I realised until Alan Bates got together a little group. And then um, I think it was one, one of the villagers actually brought in this paperwork and said, Tracy, you know, there's others of you out there. Because you are in this bubble and, and you, you know, it's the post office, you trust them, you believe everything they said. And then a few months down the line, we had a little group in, in the village hall, which people have seen on the drama. Mm. And then we went to another one a few months later and every time the hall got fuller and fuller and fuller. And that was when I think it started dawning on us that this was huge. And we were in the middle of a massive problem yeah well, let's talk a little bit about how it felt when you realized you were in a fight that ma might last a very long time first here's a, a little brief reminder of the battles that are still being fought after Hillsborough Anfield became the focus universal sympathy was felt for the relatives of those who died but they could not have realized then that they'd spend the next 20 years calling for justice frantic partisan debate over who's to blame for the destruction of important records. No, the decision to destroy the landing cards was taken in 2009 under a Labour government. The world of many sub-postmasters was turned upside down. They found themselves being accused by the post office of false accounting and fraud. Some went to jail. They still don't have the answers, the official answers about what happened. They still don't have justice. There's been no accountability. And until they get that, they really can't begin to heal. Jenny, did you ever, was there a time when you ever thought, do you know what, this is going to go on for years and years and years because you had the Taylor report, then you had the inquest where the coroner ruled, no, we're not looking at any deaths after 3.15. Yeah. So, and then you fought for decades to get that, a new inquest which overturned that accidental death ruling to unlawfully killed. I mean, it's decades. It is decades and, in fact, we're coming up to the 35th anniversary in April this year and um, it, was, it, it was decades and I think the thing that we all have in common here speaking to these lovely people um, is that it's the powerful protecting themselves mm -hmm. it's those in power protecting mm -hmm. themselves Absolutely. and people like all of us sitting here tonight um, having to deal with the consequences yeah. of them protecting themselves mm -hmm. That's what we all have in common here, isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 I totally agree with you, you know, and I'm, I'm a strong believer in that. I've been saying for a while, you know, I, I, I believe that the system we're all in isn't broken. It's designed specifically this way. That's yeah. why they won't want to implement Hillsborough law, because they know if they do that, there will be some level of accountability yes. with some of these corporate entities or some of these yeah. government officials, yeah. and we don't have that. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why don't we have that? It's because they're being protected by their friends who, in, in government who are given contracts or given jobs. I mean, how many 
how many lords and ladies have there been since Grenfell, you know, or since any of these, yeah. these national scandals? Yeah. Yeah. How, many, how many of the government ministers have been, you know, rewarded while we've suffered we've trying to get some justice? Still you know? suffering. We're still suffering. Exactly. We're still suffering. You know? I remember talking to you, Karim, on the fifth, five years after Grenfell, the fifth anniversary, mm. and you actually said, I can't be having this conversation with you, Victoria, in another five years. Yeah. I cannot do what the Hillsborough people have done. Mm. Yeah. Because it felt then yeah. for you to achieve justice for your uncle, for all the families of those who died, yeah. it was going to take years. Yeah, I mean, we, we realised and we knew that this wasn't a sprint. This was always going to be a marathon. Mm. And it was after meeting, meeting yourselves um, uh, at Hillsborough and, 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 and a lot of the families there. And one of the, the best bits of advice that they gave us that, that sort of hit home with us straight away was the importance of staying together, the importance of being united, yeah. being one front, one voice, yeah. leading the campaign, leading the fight. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and we kept that and we did that, you know, and that's why we have Grenfell United and, 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 and they're doing great work. And, and yeah. it's just, I don't see this finishing in the next few years. You know, we know that the, the second phase of the public inquiries report's coming out in a few months. Yep. The police can't do anything until that that's report done. comes yep. out. Once that's out, how many, how long does it take then to present a case to the CPS? What happens then with the CPS? Mm -hmm. You know, and me personally, I have some different personal views about the police. I, I don't believe that they will deliver us justice based on how they went about collecting evidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't ask corporations or individuals after they've committed a crime or you believe them to commit a crime to hand in any evidence themselves you go as the police you go and take it and that's why you know we learned in the public inquiry that evidence was binned yeah you're, sorry can i just say yeah. you're lucky enough to have an inquiry i mean they um got wendy williams to sort of like do a report yeah. on this on Windrush. But, on Windrush, but it wasn't it wasn't for us. It was more for the Home Office yeah. because nothing came out of that that helped the victims of this Windrush scandal. Um, and what was put in place to help us got taken away. Well, there were thirty recommendations from Wendy Williams, and the, the Home Secretary at the time, Priti Patel, said we'll we'll accept them all. Yeah. We'll take them all on. Yeah. And then another Home Secretary came in, Suella Braverman, and yeah. she dropped a number of them, including a, a sort of individual advocate. Yeah, she did. And the reconciliation events is something that they had commissioned someone to come out and speak to the people, the, the, the Windrush victims. Mm. And then they were all excited because then they would have been in the face of the ministers and say, look, look at us in our face and understand what we have gone through. And then that got taken away from us. Okay. So it, it, it's so hurtful. We haven't got anyone that's willing to understand we, we can't get legal aid. But people will, people will say, Glenda, mm. you've got compensation. That's, yes. It's done. The compensation is not good enough. I'm really sorry, it's not. And They're, actually plenty of people haven't got it. No, and they haven't, and mm. people are still suffering. We're still having people deported. We still have people um, abroad who can't get back into the country who are being denied their, um, their citizenship mm. as British people. It's so unfair. Let's talk about your experiences of what it feels like after that initial fight for justice when there might have been some partial acknowledgement or even a full acknowledgement of the truth for some more recent footage related, related to each of your experiences. But policing is also apologising for the now nearly 34 years that the families have had to wait to have their questions answered, to have justice. Make a commitment to memorialise Grenfell by making fundamental changes in your business models by putting people ahead of profits. It's not just the wait for compensation. Around 700 sub-postmasters may have been wrongly convicted. Jeff applied for the Windrush compensation scheme and was offered £10,000. So actually he got an interim payment but he, did, he got it two days before he died, so he didn't get to spend it. I mean, it's just, it's heartbreaking, isn't it? Let me ask you my final question. How, how does your experience end, if it does end? Jenny. Well, for me, it'll never end. We, we, we've, we've had our truth. We've, we've had the second inquest where the correct verdict was reached. 
that um, all 97 victims were unlawfully killed, which legally means that it was gross negligence manslaughter, but we've never had any accountable, not one person in power has had to account for those 97 unlawfully killed victims. Tracy, how do you want to see the, the post office scandal end? Um, I'd like, I mean, it's, it's all coming out in the public inquiry. We are lucky enough to have a public inquiry. But every day, if you look at the news, a new scandal's coming out with the post office. There's so many layers to this. And it's, you know, everyone says it's right at the top. But the investigators themselves, they've got to, they've got a moral compass. They could have done their job with humanity. They didn't. Mm. I think I'd like, one, the post office to be stripped back and the government because, you know, someone's got to say they knew about this years ago and they didn't do anything mm. for a drama to make them do something mm -hmm. is shameful. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. I would, I, we know, I know that the people that made the decisions are never going to go to prison. Mm -mm. But I'd like how do them, you, how do you say that so emphatically? Because they, they, justice is never going to get them. They, they sit on that public inquiry and they go, oh, I can't remember. No, I can't remember. Sorry. I might write that statement, but I can't remember. They've all got amnesia. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So they're never, they're never going to go to prison. Mm. But I'd like them to just feel and go through just a fraction of what we've gone, the humiliation, the, mm -hmm. the loss of reputation, the, you know, just a fraction of it. Yeah. Just to be put in our shoes just for a little while. Glenda, how would, how would you like what happened to you and others? I mean, you told me earlier, five people have rung you today who were still uh, yeah, I've in the middle of a nightmare. Two, uh, two um, abroad, and I've got five sisters, all in their early 30s, who were born here mm. and have just received their passport, their British passport, last year. So it's showing you, this is never going to end. There's people still going to be coming forward. We're dealing with a cohort of people who are the elderly, mm. and there's still the young who were affected. This isn't going to end. But we need someone to be held accountable, and I'm hoping that we can yes. come together yeah. and yes. be united yeah. 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 to yes. fight this together. Yes. Well, I mean, that was one thing that I you know, wanted to, to, to suggest, because through hearing your stories, obviously we have a relationship with, with yourself and some of the, the, the families at Hillsborough. And, and for me, you know, learning about all of your experiences, mm individually or in our small little groups yeah we, we we can make some changes or we can bring about some type of pressure but i feel like we're all fighting the same beast yeah. and we've spoken about yeah. how much sim similarities, similarities we have Definitely. with what we're going yeah. through yeah. Yeah. so why not unite yeah. right be one voice yeah. bring these similarities together and fight the beast mm -hmm. i mean effectively you know justice comes in so many so many forms but oh, yeah. i mean look at what's happening look at what's happening today you know mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of people have taken to the street yeah. you know trying to call for a ceasefire yeah. and stopping mm -hmm. you know hundreds of, of sorry tens of thousands of innocent women and, and children being mm -hmm. massacred mm -hmm. and killed and the government don't care they don't even want to call for a ceasefire no, so really what do we have together. to do we have to come together. come together we have to make sure our voices are, are, are mm -hmm. unified mm -hmm. and loud mm -hmm. It's hard, it's tough. I mean, for, I'm, I've, I've been doing this nearly seven years. Yeah. It's been a bit longer for you guys, yeah. and, and I really hope it, it, it doesn't. But the only way is if, we, is if we continue to put the pressure on the powers that be. We're all fighting the same yeah. beast. Let's, let's get together yeah. and let's unify our, 100%, unify our fight. 100%, I agree. Um, there's a, a small round of applause there from Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, in terms of the powers that be, um, let me read a, a statement from the government. Our oh. thoughts... Sorry. No, it's all right, it's all right. You react how you react. No, it's just, you know, we've had so many of these statements. And we, we, you spoke about, with Glenda earlier, about the recommendations that, um, 30 recommendations came out of, of Wendy's report, right? How many recommendations? Well, let me ask a different question. When was the first um, uh, phase one report recommendations published? And how long has it been since yeah. the government's done anything? Yeah. Let, let me just... just Sorry. No, it's all right. Uh, it's all right, don't worry. Our thoughts remain with those affected by these tragedies. The government remains absolutely committed to righting past wrongs and working to ensure justice is delivered for the victims. The government's paid out more than £75 million through the Windrush Compensation Scheme. Following the Grenfell Tower tragedy, the government introduced some of the toughest building safety regulations in the world. We're providing more support to people in the aftermath of public disasters like Hillsborough. This includes creating a duty of candour by law to hold policing to the highest standards. 
The Horizon scandal was one of the greatest miscarriages of justice in our history, in our nation's history, which is why we set up an independent inquiry to establish culpability. If we had more time, I'd let you respond to all that. Oh, I'd, but, yeah, I'd love, which, to, love but, to respond. But I'm going to pause it there, and I'm going to thank you so much, Jenny and Kareen and Glenda and Tracy, yeah. for coming thank on the programme and, and getting together and talking to each other for our audience. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.